Hi, my name is Pastor Kong Jin Ai and I'm a student of His Eminence, the 25th Sam Rinpoche, here at Kachara in Malaysia. For the last 20 to 30 years, the Tibetan leadership have divided the community on many issues. There is the issue of the two Karmapas, there is the issue of the Panjin Lamas, and of course, there is the issue of Toji Shukden. Thanks to the Tibetan leadership's enforcement and encouragement of these divisions, not only has the community divided according to their opposing views, but the monasteries have also split as well. For example, within the Dorji Shukden issue, Ganden Shatse Monastery split into Shatse, which does not practice Dorji Shukden, and Sha Ganden Monastery, which does practice Dorji Shukden. Sarame Monastery gave up their Shukden practice, and the monks who refused to abide by the ban were expelled and forced to form Serpo Monastery, which does practice Shukden. And while the Tibetan leadership may be okay with the many schisms and divisions within their community, I think that it's pretty disturbing that after 600 years, anyone can be okay, justify or excuse the fact that great monastic institutions are split in two. Is this the vision that Lama Tsongkhapa had for the monasteries? There are a lot of people who think that the time for healing has come, but with the divisions and hatred so deeply entrenched, most people don't know how to go about this healing process. So what I'm going to talk about today may not necessarily be the most popular opinion, but I figured, hey, with so many exciting geopolitical changes taking place globally, isn't it time we try something new? Everything else that's been tried for the last 20 years has pretty much failed. So, if you look at what's going on in the world today, many opposite sides are coming together to try and move forwards towards a harmonious future. And how are they going to do that? Through mutual respect. In our case, specifically as Shukden practitioners, this means seriously considering why it is important to respect His Holiness the Dalai Lama as part of our reliance on Dorji Shukden. Most of you will not believe that I'm telling the truth, thinking, oh, she practices Shukden, of course she would say that. So let me offer you a little proof that doesn't come from me, but from people who are clearly and obviously not Shukden practitioners. In 2015, in the aftermath of a Reuters article, there were a number of people who spoke up against the inaccuracies they perceived in the article. Two of these critics were Justin Whittaker, a Buddhist author, and Luka Jam, a candidate in the 2016 Sikyong prime ministerial elections. Both said that it is a fallacious belief that Shukden practitioners are a homogenous group who share only one view of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. They said that in essence, there are three main groups. The first group does not say anything, preferring to maintain their practice in silence. Another group outright protests against His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and because of them, a lot of attention and awareness has been brought to the ban on Doji Shukden. The third and final group speaks up against the ban, but they continue to advocate respect for His Holiness. And we at Kachara, under His Eminence Sam Rinpoche's guidance, fall under this third group of people, and I would like to share with you the reasons why. The first reason is that being respectful of the Dalai Lama proves that there is nothing wrong with Shukden practice and that you don't become rude or mean when you do the practice. People accuse Doji Shukden of being spirit worship, saying that the practice leads you further away from enlightenment because Buddhists are not supposed to pray to spirits. On the other hand, we Shukden practitioners maintain that Shukden practice brings us closer to enlightenment because Doji Shukden is Manjushri. Since that is our position, it is therefore our responsibility to consider how our behaviour reflects our practice, how the world at large will view our behaviour, and how that view will affect our campaign to lift the ban. So we say that Doji Shukda practice brings us closer to enlightenment, but what does that actually mean? The most basic definition is that we become kinder, gentler people. It means that we become respectful to everyone, whether or not they will treat us in the same way. We can also talk about this from the perspective of conventional and ultimate view. Conventional view is seeing things for how they appear, while ultimate view is seeing things for what they really are. Now, applying this to a real-life situation, it means if you engage in outwardly disrespectful behaviour, most people will automatically surmise it is because you are an inherently disrespectful person. Maybe you have your good reasons for being disrespectful. Maybe it's because you're trying to shock people 
or create some sort of ruckus so everyone pays attention. But because most of the world operates from conventional view, they will never know that ultimately good motivation of yours. They will only see what is put in front of them. And so, in this conventional world, when we disrespect His Holiness the Dalai Lama, our behaviour may be perceived by the wider community, may not match their projection of a Buddhist practitioner. In being rude and vulgar or appearing violent, third-party observers who don't know any better will immediately associate our behaviour with our Shukdan practice. This means if we are rude, they will think that Shukdan taught us to be rude. If we are mean-spirited, they will blame our behaviour on Doji Shukdan. So it is important for us to bear this in mind, that most of the world operates from a conventional view, and therefore respecting His Holiness the Dalai Lama helps to show that when we practice Doji Shukden, it turns us into nicer, kinder people. That it was Doji Shukden who inspired us to tolerate adversity with patience. Look, he is the guy whose name is being dragged through the mud, and if he can tolerate that with dignity, why can't we? The second reason for why it is important to respect His Holiness the Dalai Lama is that being respectful of His Holiness proves that Shukden practicing high lamas are right because their students are a reflection of their teachers. Even though this may be a reductive, oversimplistic approach, again, according to the conventional view of the world, that is the approach most people will use. Like father, like son, and like mother, like daughter. Let me give you an example that will make things clearer. Take, for instance, Penpa Tsering, the former speaker of the Tibetan parliament in exile and the former Dalai Lama's representative of Dunjo to North America. In 2014, while addressing a crowd of Tibetan students, Penpa Tsering told everyone that Gyabje Pabongka Rinpoche died coughing blood. He intentionally lied to a new generation of Tibetan youth who don't know any better and change the perception of one of Tibet's greatest lamas of living memory. In doing so, Pempa Tsering perpetuated a cycle of destruction and hate in order to further his political agenda, to appear that he is fervently supportive of the Tibetan leadership's ban on anything related to Doji Shukden. He planted the seeds of hatred and disharmony inside impressionable young minds and taught the children how to discriminate and divide. Back then, and even now, we say that Pempa Tsering's poor behaviour reflects his lack of practice or the inability of his teacher to impart any kindness or consideration into him. We say Pempa Tsering is this way and made such ignorant remarks because his teacher did not teach him very well. So how come that logic applies to him and it doesn't apply to us? When we behave badly, it doesn't reflect well on our teachers either, just like how Pempa Tsering was a bad reflection of his guru due to his poor behaviour. The other real point is that we get upset when Pempa Tsering makes such derogatory remarks about Gyabje Pabongka Rinpoche because he's our lineage guru. Think about how strongly we feel when people insult our lineage masters. And then think about His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the fact that he is the guru and lineage master of people who hate Doji Shukden. How will they feel when we insult their teacher, His Holiness the Dalai Lama? So when both sides are insulting each other's teachers, and wounding one another with weapons of the tongue. How can reconciliation between the two sides be possible? Instead of focusing on how to hurt each other, we must focus on the core issue, and that is, there is a ban, and it is wrong on all levels, whether spiritually or purely from a human-to-human -human level. No one has any right to tell a person what they can or cannot believe in, and to use force to impose that view on them. Now, when I talk about respecting His Holiness the Dalai Lama, that respectful attitude can arise from two premises. The first premise is that we should always be respectful of another human being, any human being. The second premise is that we should be respectful because His Holiness the Dalai Lama is Chenrezig. Look, maybe the Dalai Lama is Chenrezig, maybe he's not. Either way, it cannot harm us to view him as an attained being because Number one, if His Holiness the Dalai Lama turns out to be ordinary, at least we did not accumulate the negative karma of offending or hurting the feelings of another sentient being. Number two, if His Holiness the Dalai Lama turns out to be an extraordinary being, 
then luckily we did not accumulate the negative karma of denigrating a Buddha. Our great Shukden Lamas always counsel us to never lose respect for His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and this is something that us Shukden practitioners, we must follow. In my 20 years of relying on Doji Shukden, I have never heard of one single Shukden Lama who has been truly disrespectful of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. The advice to respect His Holiness the Dalai Lama started with His Holiness Kyabje Chujang Doji Chang in his seminal written work, Music Delighting the Ocean of Protectors, and has continued up to the present day with our teacher, His Eminence Sam Rinpoche, and even Doji Shukden. If Doji Shukden himself counsels us to respect His Holiness the Dalai Lama, would it not make sense that in the grand scheme of things, it is important for us to do so? At the end of the day, regardless of how we intend to get there, what is our ultimate goal? Why do we practice the Dharma and what are we trying to achieve? Whether you rely on Shukden or not, everyone's ultimate goal is actually enlightenment. So whatever we do, we always have to remember that it is our spirituality that is at stake. And when we denigrate the opposite side, it may feel satisfying for the moment, but it will not be beneficial for our spirituality in the long run. We say we practice Doji Shukden to protect our spiritual path, to give us a chance to alleviate our sufferings and that of others. Well, we can start that here and now, with our body, speech and mind, by carrying through what our own protector has advised us. Therefore, to respect His Holiness the Dalai Lama is to respect our own spiritual practice and progress, and that is what our teacher, His Eminence the 25th Sam Rinpoche, has always taught us. Thank you for listening today to these thoughts that I have to share. My name is Pastor Kong Jin Ai, and I spoke about the importance of respecting His Holiness the Dalai Lama and how we, as Doji Shukden practitioners, should always do so. I gave you two main reasons, as well as talked about it from the perspective of conventional and ultimate view. May His Holiness have a long life. May the Tibetan people always have harmony amongst themselves, and may they always have great spiritual teachers to continue turning the wheel of Dharma. Thank you. Thank you.